Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to discuss vector 2 in number 17. We are told that uh, in the figure below, E is the midpoint of BC. So we can see E is the midpoint. AD is to DC is equal to 3 is to 2. So the ratio AD is to DC is 3 is to 2. And F is the meeting point of BD and AE. So this is the meeting point. Vector AC equivalent to C. So this vector, the whole of this vector is vector C. Then AB is equivalent to vector B. Part A express the following vectors in terms of BC. The first one is BD. So vector BD can be given as a, not the root which will take us to BD, can be BA, then plus a AD. From BA, then AD, that will give us BD. Now, in terms of B and C, we will talk of if AB equals to B, then BA will be equivalent to the reverse of B. Then we add AD, which is 3 out of the 5 proportions of vector c we can rearrange this and we start with the positive vector vector c minus vector b so that is the expression in part two we are expressing a e so vector a e can be given in two ways we can either move from a to b then b e or from a to c then c e let me prefer AB plus BE. AB plus BE. Now in AB, we have the vector B. Then vector BE. Now that uh, E is the midpoint of BC, then it means we have a proportion of 1 and a proportion of 1 here. In other words, BE is a half of BC. So BE is going to be half of BC. Then now we can substitute B plus half. Vector BC is going to be the reverse of B plus C. The reverse of B plus C. So at this point now we can have B minus half B plus half c and finally we will find ourselves at half b plus half vector c so that is the expression in the, the part b we are told the uh, bf is equivalent to t vector bd and af is equivalent to n vector ae express af in two ways and find the values of t and n so vector af should be expressed such that in the first way we have a af already expressed here so it's n vector a e that means n vector a e is up there half b plus half c this is going to be half n vector b plus a half n vector c that is one way the second way of expressing af should be such that we accommodate bf so we want to express af such that we accommodate bf and that means ab plus bf ab plus bf a, B plus B, F. So we're going to have vector A, B, S, B plus vector B, F, which has been expressed here as T vector B, D. This means we need vector B plus T multiplied by vector B, D. And B, D is a, in a Roman 1 here. 3 over 5c 
minus vector b. So we'll have b plus 3 out of 5 t vector c minus t vector b. So we can group in the second expression of the terms with vector b, such that we begin with b minus t vector b, then plus 3 out of 5 t vector c. And at this point, we can talk of 1 minus t vector b plus 3 out of 5 t vector c. This one is the second expression. With the two expressions now, it is easy for us because they are both giving us AF. It's easy for us to find the constant T and N. This means in both expressions or equations of vector AF, we can equate the coefficients of the respective or the corresponding, the corresponding coefficients of each vector. In the first expression, the coefficients of vector b are half n. The coefficients of vector b is half n. This one is the same as the coefficients of vector b in the second, which is 1 minus t. The coefficient of vector b is 1 minus t. That is one equation whereby we can re-express it. To remain with n, we multiply through by 2. So 2 minus 2t. Two that is one equation. The second equation, we should uh, again equate the coefficients of vector c such that half n vector c is equivalent to the coefficient of vector c in this one is 3 out of 5t vector c. So the vector c can cancel in both cases. So we just equate the coefficients of vector c. Now this is again another equation whereby we can again remain with n, we can express it in terms of n such that we have to multiply through by 2 to remain with n. Therefore when we multiply by 2 we will have 6 out of 5 t. Now this is the first expression, this is the second, the equations in this case. Now that n equals to 2 minus 2t, two and again, n equals to 6 out of 5t, then we can equate the two sides now and have 2 minus 2t being equivalent to 6 out of 5t. This means we can remain with 2 and have 6 out of 5 plus 2. This becomes 3 and a fifth or one over five t this means we can remain with t by dividing through by three and a fifth so two divided by three over fifth gives us t as five out of eight that is one constant the other constant is n which can be given by substituting in the second expression we multiply t by six over five and this becomes exactly three quarters. So n is three quarters, t is five out of eight. And finally, we can state the ratio in which f divides bd and the ratio in which f divides ae. So for bd, for bd we can say bf equals to, according to this, T B D and T is five out of eight vector B D. Therefore, from B to F, we have five out of eight. B F is five of eight of B D. That means F is dividing B D in the ratio five proportions and three proportions. So that BF becomes 5 out of 8 proportions. Then it means we have 5 and for the total proportions to be 8, the remaining here are 3. So F divides vector 
ED in the ratio of 5 is to 3. And that is why we have said, according to this expression, BF equals to T, which is a 5 over 8 of BD. So 5 is to 3. The other one, the ratio in which F divides AE. And we go to the second now, whereby AF equals to N, and N is 3 quarters. So if, if AF equals to N, and N is 3 quarters, it means we have 3 and 1. So that we have this one as 3 out of the four proportions of AE. Therefore, F is dividing AE in the ratio 3 is to 1. That is why we have got N as 3 quarters, because uh, AE equals to N, that is 3 quarters. Mm -hmm. AF, sorry. AF equals to 3 quarters of AE. So, 3 out of total proportions of AE, which are 4. So it means if this is already 3, the remaining proportion here is only 1. That is why we have N as 3 quarters. Therefore, the ratio is 3 is to 1.